Okay, I feel obliged to give you a PowerPoint show on the Green Revolution. I know you've probably been reading about it. I know this is probably going to sound repetitive. I know I talk about it all the time and whatnot, but let's just sort of address it formally for a moment, okay? I promise not to take too long. Um, I, I completely stole this show, by the way. I didn't do this. This isn't mine. Um, I stole it from at one of the last uh, conferences I went to in, in Mali. Um, So the Green Revolution starts in different places in the world. Uh, the part I know most about is, is Mexico. Um, but this slideshow is about Asia, which I think is even, in some ways, even more emblematic. Um, and it comes into what's a very complex agricultural system. Right? So just, just so we're on the same page. So we, s we see what the struggle is, right? We see what the challenge is. And we know the importance of agriculture. And so now we have a, campa a campaign specifically about agriculture, and that campaign is the Green Revolution. And we know what has to get done, right? We've got to sell a lot of fertilizers and pesticides. We've got to expand. We've got to develop. And we especially have to uh, make sure that we extract surplus for industry. Okay? Right. So, however, you have to move into a very complex, socially, culturally, and agriculturally complex uh, diversity of systems and how do you get it going? How do you get people who have who normally in the course of a year grow 60 different varieties of rice you know in a village on two acre plots to grow one variety of rice? How do you get people who manage fertility um, using crop wastes uh, animal waste, human waste, um, fallows, uh, working fallows, soft fallows, hard fallows, to just buy the fertilizer. Right. Um, and how do you get the social system, which I think we talked about also, that you know has held this in place with their own ideology, with their own belief system, with their own way of doing things and of considering what is important to change in order to adopt these technologies. Um, so, we are at the height of the Cold War. There, there are these sort of residual from colonial and pre-colonial periods, dominance of, of landlords. That's also true in, in Latin America. Um, but you have a lot of insurrections and some very strong social movements. Why? Because, on one hand, um, colonialism has gone to hell in a handbasket. And after the Second World War, you have all these movements for national liberation. Right? Um, now, whom would you recruit if you were going to have a revolution? The peasants. Now, if you want to recruit the peasants, you're going to have to give them something. What would you give them? Promises. Promise. Empty promises. There we go. <laughs> you at least have to promise them the land, right? And so you have the development of very strong peasant movements, in, um, which primarily are mo mobilized on the basis of one, usury, the end to usury, and access to land. Right. Now this is, gets twisted and morphed along the way because they may not be asking for individual plots of land at all. Right? But that is how it ends up on one side. And they may not be asking for communal plots either, but that's how it ends up on the other side. Right. Um, food shortages is funny. I, it's not funny at all. I went to San Francisco today. They had an event on the farm bill in the, in the plaza, and everybody got up and spoke and whatnot. And so we're in this interesting, sort of interesting period right now where uh, we've never produced more grain in the history of the earth. And we have the lowest reserves, lowest grain reserves that we've had in almost 100 years. I mean, since we've started, we've got, we have we've got 54 days worth of grain in reserve on the planet right now in the face of producing more food than we, more grain than we've ever produced before. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? 
has to do with biofuels, but um, the uh, the contradiction I'm getting at is is that there was plenty of food being produced during this period, but it wasn't being well distributed for different reasons. Okay. So you're getting these food shortages. There's nothing like getting people to rise up if they're hungry. Right? So that was the other way you could enlist the peasantry. Um, I'm say, just say something very. I've probably said this before, but it's very important to remember. And what always astounds me is maybe is how few people even know what the Green Revolution is. So now, when you come out of this class today, you will all be experts on the Green Revolution compared to nine tenths of the people in California. Um, but the whole thing about the Green Revolution is that it. Okay, 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 it raised yields. It raised yields. Um, but, you know, when people used to plant corn this far apart, with Green Revolution seeds, you could plant it this far apart. That's all. Really, no magic here. You know, that's all they did. Okay, and you have all these PhDs, Nobel Prize winners, and they went like this. Yeah. Now I go like this, no one gives me a Nobel Prize. Okay, so you had to add a lot more fertilizer, you had to add a lot more water, you needed flat land, you had to mechanize, you had, because you had to add a lot more energy in general, right, to the whole thing. And um, yeah, duh, you get more back. Now, there's a point of diminishing returns, right? You add, you add, you add, and pretty soon, shh, you're not getting back anything anymore, and, and actually then your yields drop off, right? Um, but that's basically what it was about, and growing more than one crop a year and whatnot. Well, imagine what this did to the ecology of those complex systems. Imagine what it did to those, you know, ancient terraces. You know, you build those terraces, takes a lot of work, a lot of labor. Most of it has to be slave labor. If slavery is gone, you don't get a chance to build them again. So you rip them down, that's it, they're gone. Well, they got, a lot of them got ripped down. Um, so it's really about not a high yielding agriculture. It's about a high input agriculture, which is brilliant, don't you think? If you're selling inputs. I think it's brilliant. 